Facilities, Arts, and Culture Committee at the Metropolitan Council. Today is Tuesday, July 19th. I am detecting a quorum with myself, Councilmember Chair Bradford. I see Councilmember Hurt, Councilmember Syracuse, Taylor, and Young. Uh, we've got a brief agenda today. I've got two items that could potentially go on consent. I'll go ahead and read those bill numbers, and you can let me know if they need to be pulled. We've got RS 2022-1647, Allen and Bradford. And RS 2022-1653, Allen, Bradford, Gamble, and Suara um, on consent. Any of those need to be pulled. All right. Can I, can I get a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor of consent, say aye. 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 Any opposed? If it's five in favor, none against. All right. Next item, we've got bills on second reading. It is... BL 2022-1250, Styles Welch, and Tombs. This amends Title II of the Metropolitan Code to create the National Entertainment Commission. We have two substitutes, one from Councilmember Styles and one from Councilmember Slope. So if I can go ahead and get the motion on the bill, and then we can take up the substitutes. So moved. Second. All right. Since it's the top one here, we will start with <coughs> Councilmember Styles' substitute. Um, the chair will recognize the sponsor. She'd like to kind of give us an update or an explanation. Thank you very much, Chair. So um, this substitute, um, we're working, we're trying to work with Council Member Slope to come up with a happy middle ground. We weren't ultimately able to make it there, but within that, it lessens the commission from 15 uh, to 11. It determines the two unions that we had already been amended onto the bill and then establishes them as IOTC and the Screen Actors Guild. And then also um, just kind of merge the ideas of community engagement, also um, interacting in terms with the state and with their, the Tennessee Entertainment Commission. So I think those are the, the points that sum it up. And I'd love to talk more about it once you guys get through, but it's clearly not the campaign, so. Um, will it be appropriate if we go ahead and discuss Council Member Slope's substitute as well so we know what the differences are, similarities. Any objections to that? Great. Um, first off, thank you, Ms. Darby. I thought Ms. Darby did a great job at doing this right here, which is a comparison of these two bills. Um, the long and short of it is, I, yes, Councilman Stiles and I have spent a considerable amount of time in the last couple of weeks trying to merge these two together, and, and I was quite stunned that her new resolution Everything in yellow is what I wrote for the first one. So they are very similar. Um, Ms. Dar Ms. Hannah will attest to, this is my language. Nonetheless, the biggest difference is here. I want a nine member board. There's, there's a different way that we've selected them, but uh, it includes SAG-AFTRA and IOTC. Um, I don't even have a problem with amending this and adding Dave Pomeroy from the Musicians Union, to be honest with you. Um, Dave knows more about the, 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 let's just say, the selected connectivity between music, film, transmedia, television, et cetera, et cetera. Um, she's got a three-year term of members. I've got, a, or excuse me, a five-year term. I've got a three-year term. Most, most of the only real differences here is one's a board, one's a commission. And they are pretty much identical because I wrote most of it. So I'll leave it to you. I ask your approval. All right. So considering that the uh, substitutes that the two of you have are so similar, I'm, I'm still wondering why, why it isn't that you all can come together on the bill. We've called this a commission six times in the past. Six times it's failed. So, in my, in my humble opinion, let's change the name for just starters to begin anew. Because every time we call it a commission, it, it ends up in purgatory, in mayoral purgatory. And I know, because I've sat on bloody every single one of them. Okay. Any other questions or any other discussion on this before we begin voting on substitutes? Say something else. Well, a 
Okay, so <coughs> Council Member Swope's statement uh, about the majority of my subcommittee being his, that's not true. It is a merge of, of both because that was the attempt that we were going for is to have something that was equitable. Again, so to answer your question simply, it was about whose name went first, and so that's why there are two substitutes. So, um, as I've been working on this for a very long time, I was not unwilling to switch the order. So, we had two substitutes before us. I will say, in terms of having a commission, the stakeholders that I've been meeting with for over a year prefer commission to board because boards feel exclusionary and commissions feel inclusionary. And they feel there's been a void in terms of having a voice in town for quite some time and they're excited to have this commission. You've received emails to that point for the last three meetings. They've been in support of my legislation and also my substitutes. When you get to your seats, you're going to see a list of some of the significant endorsements that we had come through. Shannon Sanders is a Grammy Award winning producer. He has endorsed this. He's also the creative director at BMI. There's Damian Horn, who's part of Music Music Mafia, which was big and rich back in the day. Um, we have the director of Belcourt Theater, the owner of Third and Lindsley. We also have a five-time Academy Award winner who has also emailed us. It is clear that there is a need for a commission, and they've been very clear about what substitute. I'd also like to add, there's been injected confusion in regards to the music venue study that we voted on previously. This has nothing to do with the creation of this commission. That has been voted on, it is a done deal, it is moving forward. I'm excited about it, I think it's a great thing for us to do. There is absolutely no conflict in the creation of this commission and doing that study. For whatever reason, it's been drug in to create confusion and it has created a lot of confusion. But the office that is coming it would be great to have a group of people that get to work in, in conjunction with it and help out and market and promote Nashville. As someone who has spent over 20 years in both music and film and theater, I'm not making this up. What I saw when I first came here, the need is still there. The gaps are still there in terms of supporting creative industries. And as entertainment has grown in Nashville, we're not just country music anymore. We have R&B here, we've got Jack White with rock, um, Jill Scott has moved here, Andy Ali has moved here. There's a wide variety, not to mention the other industries in entertainment that are coming here. And so having an all-inclusive commission makes sense. And when I was having conversations, even about the upcoming office, the public and private partnership conversations all supported having an inclusive office, not just film, not just music separately, but everything all together. So, I would like you to bear that in mind as you vote on these substitutes. Again, constituents are letting you know what they want to see. I think we should be careful about trying to lend any decisions towards council matter first. We were all elected to represent constituents. So, so my thing, is there any guarantee that what you're saying is going to be accomplished with what it is that you are suggesting. And considering it's about whose name go first, could our chair's name not go first since he's of the public right? And then it wouldn't be maybe a discrepancy between whether you or he go first, but. I mean, if that would be a compromise that both sponsors would be amenable to, I that's possible I would do that, but these are so for fair bills, and I would prefer that they did all the work on them, their names should go first on their substitutes or on the final bill. And that's my opinion on that. I actually came in a little late. Uh, I know that the mayor's office uh, had started some conversations with uh, music industry, film industry people, and then COVID came along and kind of got sidetracked. And uh, uh, I'm wondering if, uh, and I know they've invited the uh, sponsors of these bills to maybe hold up a little bit. Let's get another meeting together with some of the people they've got on board already and people that you have on board already that you'd like to add. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if it would be appropriate, if you'd be amenable to 
couple meeting deferral so we could have those discussions um, and, and, and work through this a little further. I, I, I'm one of those guys, I, at the end of the day, I'd like to see one bill that everybody kind of singing off the same page. Uh, but, uh, Just entertainment. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but can can that be an augmented or virtual reality? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, Bob. <laughs> uh, so I, I, does anybody just, so I'm going to make a motion to defer two meetings to let both parties have a discussion with the mayor's office, with the people they brought to the table also. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to fund positions for this that's not mentioned in either one of these bills uh, and the like. Uh, so that's, that's my motion. And I would second that, but I'd also like to see other um, people who would be interested in coming to the table because it seems like we got different people. I know I've talked to some folks. I know Councilman Syracuse has talked to people and we've got so many people coming and talking and I too would like to see us come together and work this thing out because it is really, really important and we want to do it right. I um, had the opportunity to travel to Chengdu, China with uh, Councilmember Syracuse and a different a plethora of individuals in different aspects of uh, the music, film, entertainment industry. And they basically had a number of people from all of these diverse backgrounds to come together to decide on how it needs to be done. I too just believe that we're better together and I would like to see us come Together. So we have a motion on a two meeting deferral, a second on the deferral motion? Yes. Okay. I have no interest, and I have spoken with the mayor's office in regards to this. The meetings aren't taking place in terms of the creation of the office. They aren't taking place until a couple months from now. And I think we have heard now for three meetings that constituency would like to move forward with this. This commission does not hem up in any way, shape, or form the future creation of this office. It does not. Councilman Young, you had your hand up. Uh, as it relates to the deferral and, and in, in general, uh, Mr. Jameson, does the, what are the thoughts of the administration on, on this little kerfuffle? Uh, very happy and, and wanting to be a, a resource for the council. There's a lot of talent and expertise in this room. There's also obviously enormous um, insight from the industry representatives. Uh, ben Eagles did begin on this project uh, pre-COVID and when COVID came, it was somewhat decimating uh, to the entertainment industry, particularly the music venues uh, and the performance venues. Um, I guess about a year ago when the light appeared to be at the end of the tunnel, uh, he began again with, with outreach from Councilman Syracuse was the first council member to reach out to them on this issue. And they have convened, uh, they have gathered um, a group of, I think, near 40 representatives. We welcome many more. Mr. Eagles has a tentative date at the end of August and a facilitator. Uh, if there's any interest at all by any of the sponsors in awaiting and hearing from this group, adding to that group, however, whatever professionals they seem, uh, they deem appropriate, we would be delighted to be part of that discussion. So then, as far as the deferral, uh, <laughs> would it would it not be more advantageous for after said meeting than those interested work together and write legislation at that time? Because uh, I don't know. I just don't understand why this is so uh, complicated and toxic. Almost, you know, it's become kind of I I I, I don't understand. Um, so. I mean, I would certainly support a deferral, but I, I almost feel that maybe um, this this is something that should be thrown aside completely and maybe be administration-led later once the things are, are coming together. I, I don't know. I am not an industry person. I don't know anything about the, the needs of the industry, but it just well, feels like, I, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Councilman Taylor. No. Thank you, Councilman Young. I wanted to hear from the administration.
administration and where they are. And I'm still somewhat confused on uh, the rush, per se, of, of moving. I want to make sure that as we grow as a city, um, this is going to be a huge opportunity for the city of Nashville. Um, and as we have grown as a city, I do feel that we have probably missed some opportunities. Um, but what I don't want to do is have a commission or a board or whatever we call it uh, that isn't going to take hold of opportunities that were uh, due to, uh, to be quite honest, due to a torn uh, political climate. Uh, not sure if people would want to come with that. So making sure that we're all on the same page is, I think, extremely important to try to move this along. So as the industry does, and I, again, Councilman Young used to say, I have no clue about the industry, I'm a fundraiser. But when they do come, that they don't skip over us uh, due to, um, uh, I guess, some of the rhetoric that they may have seen or heard uh, during this process. So just making sure that we can continue to invite the industry, the entertainment here to grow the city, grow opportunities, um, but as a holistic view for the city, um, I think that would be best. I, I guess, you know, Councilmember Stiles has indicated that a deferral is not something she's interested in. I, I guess w there might not be a point of a deferral if there's not going to be any more changes or work done. Um, so I, I would almost, I would almost throw out the idea that it might be best to just maybe not deferred and just vote this down tonight and make them make everyone come together with the administration and uh, I don't know I, I, and I'll just yeah I'm just thinking out loud I am uncertain about a, a, a two meeting deferral um, and further for what Councilmember Young said is I don't know what uh, progress would be made in two meetings the reason why this is toxic and it's become a kerfuffle because of the type of process that we've taken. The top-down, dictatorial, this is how it's going to be for all of the entertainment, the entire entertainment industry of Nashville. And it's just the wrong approach. And that's why it's become a toxic uh, atmosphere. Um, this was filed one, one week after the mayor announced the creation of the uh, Office of Music, Film, and Entertainment. We still don't yet know uh, what the job description is going to be of this uh, director level position. Um, we don't know what yet the strategic planning and governance is going to achieve with, with them, that office. To level set and to agree with everybody who's, who's involved with this, we do need a better sustainable proactive way of engaging private and public in this city ac across all sectors of the entertainment industry. Film, music, ev everything else. Um, how to do that is, is the ultimate question. Um, this has been more of a labor of love issue for, for me, for sure, as somebody who's, as I like to say, I go to work every day lining sh uh, songwriter pockets, not shareholder pockets, and, and, and that's what I do for a living. Um, I have been taking a bottom-up collaborative approach with the administration. Um, the sponsor has taken a combative approach against the administration to say this has failed because it was led by the administration and needs to have something else. Well, if you look at all our peer cities, peer and aspirational, the mayor's office and whatever configuration that they have of local government is always involved at some, at some point or at, in some form or fashion. I don't know if a 15-member politically appointed entertainment commission is the right way. I've never said that I've got all the answers to, 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 to the woes. Um, I have, as, as Mr. Jameson said, uh, worked with the administration to put together, I don't even have a, a name for it, an advisory group, a steering committee, basically to bring back industry leaders, some with institutional knowledge, some with new perspectives. And we can sit down and take a look at what we've done over the past 20 years what worked, what didn't, look at our peer and aspirational cities and say, what, what kind of structure can we put together that is going to be more sustainable? And that's just focused on music. And then we've got the film side to, to come into uh, to play. And the film industry and, and film leaders can't even totally understand how they want things uh, to, to go. Um, 
So what I had suggested two weeks ago was that we come back with a, a focused film commission. There are obviously synergies within all the entertainment industry, but there are certainly differences. Um, and there are some short-term goals that, that the film industry, who we've heard from on, on our emails, and I want to respect and, and advocate for them, there's things that they don't want to, to wait on. Um, so I think that we have a path to success if we could just focus on a film commission, uh, allow the music industry, the leaders of the music industry, allow them to engage in the process of trying to figure out how to reconstitute the Music City Music Council, or whatever we, we call it, um, and have input into the creation of the office and the mayor's office, have input into the creation of that job description, and have input into whatever commission, board, or whatever private public structure needs to be created. So this has become a, a more, more and more of a ker kerfuffle because these two substitutes are so close together now, I, I almost feel like if they could just focus on, again, as I said two weeks ago, just a film commission, allow that to take place, engage with the state, figure out how we can be proactive in securing film projects here. Obviously music, like I said, comes to play in this, but I, I can't really support this overall uh, concept just because we have not engaged with those that lead this industry in this city. To your point, um, Councilman Syracuse, if, if you want the best peer city anywhere in this country, go talk to Lynn Settler in Memphis. She's run the film commission in Memphis for 25 years. She's brilliant. Uh, she's basically a one-man operation, but good God, she knows exactly what's going on. She has a board, <laughs> an advisory board, nine members, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan. Um, in fact, a lot of the NEIB, the National Entertainment Industry Board, is modeled after Memphis. In other words, that is the best city, best practices for any, any comparable city to us. With that said, it also has a very small music component to it. It is focused on film and television. The franchise and excise, excise tax options with the Tennessee Entertainment Commission do not involve music. They are specifically for film and television projects and transmedia, metaverse, omniverse, things like that. Um, which is why the other substan substantial difference between uh, Council Lady Styles and mine substitutes are, are mine is much more, I think mine's more, much more business focused. It's much more business oriented. Uh, it is targeting Tennessee Entertainment Commission's f and &E tax and working with Bob Rains, not just calling him up every Tuesday. Um, but I, I can't disagree with you, Mr. Syracuse, that we might just need to scrap all of this and start over again. Because I, for one, tired of going back and forth about it. And I'm concerned that if we create something, is it going to be vulnerable when we change administrations? And something that needs to be sustainable regardless of who's in office. Well, in my well, opinion, listening to all the conversation we've had so far, it does sound like that this bill is putting the cart before the horse. <coughs> that I do agree slow down. The fact that we've got two competing substitutes that are so close together, but we can't just get there. I, I agree with Councilmember Nash. It's like instead of taking up two, we need to have one. I don't think I agree so much with deferring it. I think I'm following, leaning towards what we've been hearing tonight that we just, if we feel like this process is moving too slow, that it's not moving without the appropriate input from the leaders we're trying to support with this that maybe we should throw it out and invite those who are interested but let's start over with a, a fresh outlook a fresh take on it to council member Hurt's point if something is going to be made sustainable and you want private investment and a private public partnership shouldn't you take a bottom-up approach engaging leaders that can help you put together the appropriate strategic planning and governance that ultimately gets their buy-in in order to ultimately secure their funding that would create a sustainable partnership? That's, uh, quite honestly, when the Music City Music Council was transferring from Mayor Dean to Mayor Barry, 
they were ready to put a draft of a strategic plan together to, the, to the, that next administration. It never got uh, off, off the ground. And I won't get into the weeds about why that didn't sustain beyond uh, not sustainability in, in the mayor's office. Um, but the, the, what I have proposed working with the administration was picking up where that left off which was begin with the draft of a strategic plan and governance and say to the industry, here, what do you think? Can you have buy-in to this? Okay, at some point, you're going to want to create um, a private-public partnership. Councilmember Stiles mentioned the uh, uh, venue study that we did and that it doesn't apply. It absolutely applies. It foreshadows. We have collaborative funding for that venue study, public and private. That is the direction and model that we ultimately need to go for this to be sustainable. Within, as I mentioned on the floor a couple different times now, in that uh, resolution and in that RFP that is going out are not just going to be asking a consultant for tools, policies, programs that support and sustain local independent venues, but also deliverables about the underlying infrastructure that could help us uh, fi figure out a sustainable model. We just did this with homelessness. Why can't we take that same kind of uh, uh, process and get the blowhard politicians out of the way and get somebody, a consultant who is an expert in this field and help us and suggest things? Take that RFP uh, results, give it to the industry and say, what do you think? I'm sorry that this is not going at the lightning speed that Councilmember Stiles wants, but this is the appropriate way to do this. Councilmember Henderson, then I'll come back. I know Council Lady Stiles was here um, earlier, and she is not um, at present, and I did not hear some of the initial uh, uh, conversation. So um, if I'm repeating something, Chair, just please let me know. Um, you know, I think I have had some concerns um, about, you know, it's another board, it's another commission, you know, we've got all these different things. And so, um, you know, I had uh, posed a lot of questions kind of over this uh, process. And I do feel, um, and I know that's not your impression, I'm just saying my impression, um, is that it has been, um, you know, collaborative, intentional across um, the, the various uh, segments and sectors. And I think, um, you know, uh, Council, you heard I was watching Budget and Finance um, Committee yesterday, and to your point, I think we as a body, you know, like creating a commission, like that's, that's a big deal, you know, and so, um, that said, as I look at kind of all the boards and commissions that this city has, um, you know, some of which are in charter, some of which are codified, you know, um, I think um, while we do want to proceed with intention and um, I do think it, it, it can be in some ways kind of iterative. So creating a commission through this legislation, right, just through legislation to, you um, you know, your point, if you want to do more kind of plans or think about or how does this work with that, could that not then indeed be the work of the commission? And the commission might find, oh, actually, you know, we do want to put an umbrella over entertainment or, you know, this music makes us thing is over here and the special film committee of the whatever to partner with the industry. I really do think the commission itself could deliver that multifaceted work. Um, and so, um, I have, you know, my thinking on it has, has changed over time. I, I do appreciate your position and the, the points that you're making. Um, but I think whenever this body kind of gets in a place where there's something that's a really heavy lift, whether that be LPRs or something like this, and there's conflicting opinions, um, it is good to slow down, absolutely. But sometimes we just get in this stasis and we, we do nothing. And so... Um, you know, I think this has been um, deliberative. I think this group has convened outside of the mayor's office because, to your point, I think what industry has said, you know, the, the office, we all know in the mayor's office, whether it's Memphis or otherwise, sometimes the office is one person, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I think here in Nashville, especially the intersection I see, and Jeff, you may be aware of this, on the public work side of it, right? Like a lot of where uh, movie, film, video, music, video, like touches the road, literally is, is like the road, right? And so that permitting process and how that works, and we haven't really optimized that, you know? And so I, I do think there's things that we can do process-wise that, you know, the commission could look at or point to or recommend, and over time, just 
how should this be? I think the commission could actually kind of be your, you know, your study or, you know, I mean, that's kind of the charge of the, the commission. Like, what should this look like? So um, I'm not in a place any longer where I think we should, you know, uh, slow it down or withdraw it. Um, I think, uh, I think we should proceed. Um, I intend to uh, support it. And, um, you know, if we find in the first six months that, like, oh, man, this is sideways, this isn't working, then come back and change it, you know. Um, Which MIP are you supporting? Sure. I apologize. Uh, the Council Lady Stiles um, uh, original legislation as substituted through various compromises. So. Yeah, but there's two, yeah. there's two substitutes. substitutes. My, my response to that would be you, again, have had zero music industry leadership representation. All the emails that we received were from, from the film industry, which is why I made the suggestion that since this has been very heavily on film and there are some immediate needs there, this can be reconstructed into a smaller way to a film commission. If the industry leaders wanted to organically grow into a large bureaucratic 15-member politically appointed commission between council, mayor, and people at large, fine. But they haven't told us that's the direction we want to go in. We need to have industry representation in order before we create some sort of massive structure. Furthermore, there is no fiscal note on this bill. That's a big problem. It is, this is said that we are going to have a director level position. It doesn't say how much that's going to cost. It says additional uh, people will be supplied by Metro. I bet you every department head would, would like to see that in, in, in their uh, uh, documentation uh, about uh, how, how they're formed. Um, how can you possibly, in this city, with the music industry being so important to this city more than any other city in this nation, how can you create a commission without even engaging them to, to understand if that's what they even want? Well, okay. That's, so, and, and, that's and, a rhetorical and that's, question. It's and, not directed at me. No, based on and, my and that's my point. And then to, to answer your other point about that we, you know, delay, delay, or that we, we haven't been going anywhere, um, or that this, this has been going anywhere, I have been making... Uh, progress uh, on this. Slow and steady, intentional, bottom-up, engaged, uh, pr productive uh, process. Um, so, so what you would assert, Councilman uh, Syracuse, is needed, if I may, Chair, may I answer? Okay. Um, is you want a separate film commission, you want a separate music, and who then how do you convene those two for things like, you know, I mean, just all the, I mean, it just seems like that space over time was absolutely siloed, right? We're, we're filming stuff and then over here, but then music videos and scoring movies and, you know, all that seems to have kind of those silos have broken down. I recognize, I mean, everybody has their separate industry groups, right, that support that industry and the onus is on them to understand that industry and promote that we're not thwarting anybody's effort to have the professional music this or that or the professional whatever. Um, I, I, I have just found it increasingly compelling over time that, yeah, we're Music City, right? And so, um, but, um, you know, there's just a whole lot under the umbrella of uh, entertainment um, in that production space. So I guess I would say I don't think necessarily at this time creating this commission as contemplated precludes in the future okay now we decided separate film commission now we decided separate musical you know per your um you know I, I just think in some ways they become that advisory supportive multifaceted body to do the studying that you're you're speaking of and that's you know i mean that's just where i'm coming from at this juncture no disrespect to your position um but i just wanted to kind of speak to maybe the positives of it, potentially. Any further discussion on the motion to defer to May? Mayor Shelley, it seems to me that everybody in this room wants some sort of film commission. <laughs> music commission. Uh, so it just seems to me like there should be more agreement. And I think uh, a little waiting period, cooling off period might, uh, might provide that. On the deferral? Yes. Sorry, I had to go and talk about another bill and another committee. I think when I left, uh, Councilmember Syracuse was giving his opinion of why things have been toxic, and so I just wanted to be sure 
that I spoke to that. Um, I'm thinking, I'm sorry. Is it this going to be on the deferral or something? It, it is. It is that because I, I don't, I, I do not want to do the deferral, and, and part of that was commentary coming from Councilman Chan. So, um, so to that end, just speaking to, we have support for this to move forward. While I understand Council Member Nash's desire to have everyone in agreement, sometimes in life that doesn't happen. It doesn't mean that what the conclusion you come to doesn't work. Sometimes you just don't have the agreement that you need. And I'm, I very much wanted to have something where we could all be on the same page. But again, as I was saying before, when we're focused on not the legislation and the creation of an entity that is being supportive of individuals here in town, but focused on um, self, ego, future, legacy, all these things, it, it creates the bedlam that we're seeing right now. So I would not like to defer for two meetings. And in talking to stakeholders today and asking about that possibility, that was not something that people wanted. And so I'm asking, I'm asking respectfully, if you don't defer this, I just, Thank I just you. have one question. So, did you talk to people who are in opposition of your substitute? No, I spoke to the people that have been supportive of it to ask them, do you, are, you know, what if, you know, deferral comes up, would you be okay with that? Do you not want that to happen? And the answer was, no, we'd like to move forward with what we've been wanting to do. So. Well, well, to my point is, is that when you have all of the, the, the opposition, those are in favor, the, it provides you with the best uh, scenario. And, and pretty much what the collaboration that we participated in in China provided. What worked, what did not work, what's good, what's bad, how does it work here and there. So, again, it's about making sure that you come up with something that is going to be for all and not just for a targeted audience of individuals. Mm -hmm. So I don't know either if the deferment is a <coughs> deferral would be the answer. On the deferral. Uh, well, just very quickly, to Council Lady Henderson's point, you had this on your desk two weeks ago. You got it sent to you yesterday in digital form. This is a plan moving forward. So it, it's not like we're going to create a commission and throw them to the weeds. No. There, there is a plan in place created by people that have been an active participant in this industry for 30 years plus. In fact, every single board and commission, the group that put this together, has been members of. So I would call that succinct institutional knowledge that at this point in time shouldn't be ignored. All right. There's no further discussion on the deferral. We'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor of the two-meeting deferral say aye. 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 Those against? No. No. All right, so we've got two no's, four yeses. I will be not voting on that. So we have four in favor, two against, one not voting for the two-meeting deferral. Next bill is BL 2022-1392, Alan Bradford. Permits the Metropolitan Tourism Conventions Commission to hold its public meetings at the offices, 29, or excuse me, 1329. Uh, permits the Tourism Conventions Commission to hold its public meetings at the National Convention and Visitors Corporation. Um, can I get a motion on the bill? So moved. And a second? All right. So this was deferred at last meeting because we just had some questions about the mechanics and how everything works. So I'm going to let you have the first question. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, actually, I had moved the deferral at last meeting with the hope um, to bring an amendment that would require um, the meetings be uh, recorded um, since they were um, happening in private. Um, as Hannah uh, Zeitlin kindly began to work um, on that amendment, um, you know, we do talk about all these boards and commissions, and, you know, over time we say, oh, this one should do this, and this one should do that, and this one should do this, and we kind of codify it separately. Um, uh, Ms. Eichmann had another suggestion, and so I, I'd ask if she could just uh, present that and then kind of share how that would work from a timeline perspective uh, relative to 
um, this bill? Like, if you were to proceed with this now, what would the subsequent legislation do, or should we, you know, hold this in anticipation of that future so legislation? So, I think this legislation can move forward, uh, and then at the next meeting, uh, there could be another ordinance um, brought forward that would, uh, kind of the suggestion was to have um, meetings that kind of fall under this category that are, that, that meet all in, on p private property and private buildings, um, that those meetings would be required to be recorded and then posted um, online uh, instead of making it apply just to this one, one single um, commission. So it would be then, you know, for any Metro Board of right. Commission any Metro Board that of commission. meets at a private Place. Although it is a public meeting, we right. sometimes Still have a public meeting. accessibility can be challenging. All those would have to be recorded, not just us codifying this one would have to be. And you know, I did ask kind of, are there fiscal implications or knock-ons to that because you know we're MNN and all those things. Um, and there, there may be fiscal implications. Um, I have not gotten exact numbers from MNN, um, but they do. I, I do think that there is a cost associated with their, you know, their reporting of meetings, um, and and I think it would also depend on you know the infrastructure available on site, whether they have to bring cameras, which I think is probably the more likely scenario, um, and there's probably a cost associated with that. But I don't have the exact um, figures. But that would be something that would come up if legislation was drafted. It would kind of come up in the analysis of what it would yeah, cost. We can reach out to M and N and see if we can get some sort of quote for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds really young. It's like a half. Um. So, where where are these meetings currently held? So, uh, someone from legal. Yeah, um, Alex Dickerson from legal. This is actually a legal initiated ordinance, and uh, it would help, be helpful to. Explain a little background. The answer to your question is it's currently held at NCBC's offices. Okay. So um, back in 2000, the only way you could meet if your board of commission was at, in Metro property. But in 2001, an ordinance was passed allowing the private meeting space so long as it was in a lease or contract approved by ordinance. That was done specifically to allow N TCC to meet at NCBC. So that's where they've been ever since. When we were, when legal was doing its um, ethics training that all the boards and commissions went through last year, we noticed that the NCBC contract didn't have a provision in it allowing the meetings to take place. And so this, that's why we're here today is we're, we made sure that it was inserted into the new contract, but the contract still has to go through council for this aspect to be approved. Sure. I think the, the point I raised before, one, not knowing where it met, but then two, I, I guess it struck me that um, a Metro Commission was going to meet at a contractor's office. I mean, since NCBC is not Metro, they are technically a contractor of ours. Um, do we have other boards or commissions that do meet in offices of a Metro vendor or contractor? I will say that we, um, when we go through the specific Ethics and uh, Open Meetings Act training for boards and commissions, we paid special attention to this one because of the unique nature. You know, the TCC's job is basically to monitor that contract. And so we were careful to describe that. I think the closest analogy for boards and commissions would be um, that I know the sports authority meets on different properties. It's all metro owned properties. Right. But, you know, they may meet at the Predators, they may meet at the Fountain Stadium. But this is a bit of a unique um, board or commission, and I think that's why the ordinance was passed. And unique, if I may, Chair. Unique in what regard? Because the sports authority is recorded, and I think some twenty, I counted twenty. It's well, it's then. twenty, yeah, twenty eight, I think. But a couple of those were maybe the council, so I think it might be closer right. Some to of our special committees, but yeah. MNN is recording twenty eight boards and commissions, sports authority included. So this is special. Why? So in two thousand one, we passed special legislation so that they could meet. You know, I I just. But I think the know. reason they did in two thousand one was because there wasn't space. It, the, the whereas clauses say that. Um, because there wasn't always space available in the convention center, that this allowed them to meet at NCBC. And so. how many times have they ever met at the convention center? I, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, we have someone from NCBC here. It's possible. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Hi. Hi. Yeah. <coughs> Andrea Arnold. We have, um, we have, for the last several years, always met at our offices. So okay. in recent history, we've not met. Now, Sherry, the chair, right. you were on that commission. And when we, we met in the yes. convention center. All ever meeting in the convention center. Right. I think all of our meetings yeah, that I've always been, been a part of mm -hmm. have been at the convention yeah. center. 
Yeah, and I was chair of uh, tourism and convention, and we always met at the CDC. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and I think to Councilman Young's point, I think that just sets up sort of an awkward construct. So while I appreciate at the time, you know, based on convention business, there might not have been space, but, you know, you pass something in an effort to address a situation that might come up like there's no space. So if needed, we can do that. But, and again, no disrespect, but they've all, now they always meet in that office, right? And so um, I'm just trying to kind of figure out since this is somewhat anomalous, um, and it's, it's not that we don't want to support you in, in your effort to have a good meeting space and all that, but this is, you know, this is something about which our citizens care a lot. Um, it gets a lot of attention, the management of that contract. Um, we've had a lot of conversation in budget and finance as far as, you know, funds back to the city for police, for special, you know. And so the fact that this is not kind of recorded and in a public space, um, you know, meaning no disrespect, I, I just, it kind of sticks out to me a little bit. So. so could, could, could this meeting occur on Metro property that's already currently prepared for videography without a fiscal year? Is that, is that possible? I mean, can we move Can we move the meeting to a Metro property with cameras that are built in where we don't have to send technicians with cameras to a private property? One thing that I do want to note, and I need to double check on this, but I do think that there's a cost associated potentially every time an imminent I could be wrong on that, but but I know we do have internal service fees from like MN and ITS, but right. I don't know. So I don't know that there'd be no fiscal notes, but well, I'm quite sure that we're gonna have to pay for it. But okay. I'm quite sure it also costs a lot more money for gas and travel and equipment off off site. Um, if we're, I mean, we we've, we've been tedious over our budget once before, right? Many times before, and so I think. This is the big thing for me is um, a public meeting not being recorded for um, for the constituents. That's that's the big piece. Um, and if the reason it's not being recorded is because we can't record it in the space we're in, we should just come to a space that has a preparation for recording currently now, uh, which the majority of metro offices do, specifically after a fiscal note that we did create during COVID to increase our recording efforts in the metro property. So those are my thoughts, which means we don't necessarily need this uh, bill. I think it's, it's a point well made because I think we have in our term of service, Councilman Stewart, he will remember um, when I was chair of this committee um, in its former iteration of parks and libraries, um, if y'all can believe it, the park board meeting wasn't recorded. I mean, there was a lot of stuff around Fort Negley and I mean, matters of great community concern and contention and no filming. And so, you know, ask the board chair, they weren't gonna change that. We sent a strongly worded letter, now it's recorded, you know. So um, the progression over time has been to recording um, and I concur, you know, if we've, if we've got a venue, um, but the, you know, the parks board uh, room is now set up for recording. The planning commission space is set up. Um, board, I, of I, board of education. Board of education. I guess my question would be, um, and Hannah, I think you spoke to it last time when we asked about the deferral, if there was an imminent meeting, we didn't want to get you all off schedule. Our next meeting is scheduled for September. In September. Um, colleagues, should we maybe defer one more time? Um, but uh, just putting it out there. Thank you. So my view is, is this something that maybe should should be explored and discussed and maybe change in the future. I, I think there's maybe discussion or some appetite for that. However, the way I understand our Mr. Dickerson and, and Metro Legal's point is this is to tie up a, a loose end or to, to dot an I, so to speak. Um, and then if there needs to, so I, I'm kind of of the opinion, let's just not defer, move on past this. And if there's further discussion or questions about, you know, should this, happen, how should it happen, blah, 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 address it in the, in the future maybe with separate legislation. But um, that that's kind of the way I understood. I, I, I kind of picked up that same understanding that this was a more or less a housekeeping type loose ends to kind of keep us in some kind of, out of some kind of legal quagmire. So I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I think we should go ahead and pass this, but I also agree that maybe we should look at legislation requiring 
that mean all meetings be recorded or, or maybe go a step further require all Metro Boards Commission meet on Metro property um, so that we kind of get out of this potential quagmire. And, you know, we definitely have, we've got our council chambers, we've got these committee rooms, we've got the Board of Education, we've got the Planning Commission. There, there's several Metro properties that have recording capabilities that we could utilize if needed. Uh, so, I'm sorry, your hand was up. Yeah. And I appreciate that this is um, housekeeping, but respectfully, I feel like so often that's kind of what we're doing here, and that provides the touch point that raises the question, and the fact that the legislation is pending is what moves us to implement the change um, and the myriad things that we have to do if this goes on through. I mean, I'll, I'll do my best to kind of, you know, stick with it, but I, I do feel like, um, you know, if, if they don't, you know, if they don't have an August meeting, um, and I, could you speak to um, legal quagmire? I mean, at, oh, yeah. we're not in any, nobody's in any legal jeopardy between, I mean, if they met again in September without this in place, that would be a problem, correct? Yeah, if, if they met at NCBC without the change going through three readings, that would be the only issue. Okay, and so we're here on second reading, and you all are meeting when? I apologize. Let me make sure. It's September 8th at 9 a.m. But the timeline for this to pass on third reading and them to be able to issue their public notice for the location of their meeting is where I start to get a concern for a September meeting. Um, you know, if we say we deferred second reading of this till the first meeting of August, third, third reading is the second meeting of August. I don't have a calendar in front of me, I don't know, does that give them enough time from a legal standpoint to notice their meeting per mm -hmm. Sunshine Laws? Councilor, to Councilor Taylor's point, maybe to help answer this, since this does have to come to third reading, it's got to go back before budget and finance, right? Mm -hmm. can, can we get a delta of a fiscal note as it would be posting it here as opposed to off-site? Well, yeah, I can ask Eminem kind of, yeah. Obviously, I'd like that as, a, as an addendum to the fiscal analysis for third reading at, sure. at the Budget and Finance Committee, but, but I, I think that would be helpful. I don't know that this goes back before Budget and Finance. I think it's already been um, approved by Budget and Finance, so it would have to be, it could be re-referred on the floor. It may be, it, it should be. Uh, yeah, yeah, I okay. think we can yeah. that, so, that's, that's, that can't hurt. That'd be good yeah, so transparent information. I think maybe your recommendation for the committee could be with a re-referral to Budget and Finance. Okay. I'd be okay with that. What is the usual attendance for these meetings? Talk about a room for 10 or a room for 30. We typically set up the room um, as a public meeting for at least 30 potential, and it just depends. There's usually not, there's usually um, one off media that show up for the public. It just depends on the topic, but we adhere to everything else. The, the, we have absolutely, so CDC will meet wherever y'all need to meet, whether they do or not, it really doesn't matter. There's a convenience for the commission. Right. Uh, to meeting in our offices because we're reporting on our contract, which includes a lot of digital and video assets. We're showing our latest commercial or the recap of this, and we have our IT guys. We know when we push plays when we're getting all of that. Um, and we absolutely have no problem working with m and to record it live in our building, too. But we post, we have two, in, um, all the, we live in park, Capitol View. All the parking around street and um, garage are free. Um, and uh, we post notices on the two entrances of the building to that it's a public meeting and here's where to go and I typically have a staff member 15 minutes before the meeting until 15 minutes after it starts um, showing people in. And we also follow the guidelines so the agenda as well as parking directions are posted on mm -hmm. the Metro site. So all of that information is done in advance okay. of our meeting. And it's not, a, I'm sorry. Yes, I want to are you capable of recording this meeting at the uh, NCBC and then share that with MNN to, to broadcast? We could do that. We could work straight with MNN to zoom in and record it through them instead of us recording and them. Have, we could do however it works. I can add that kind of to the yeah, fiscal analysis. Like MNN exists. would have to bring their yeah, you know, equipment versus whether it was yeah, it provided. Works. It's not uncommon for commission members to have questions of the vendor that require us to go back and look at historical data or what's happened to that convention or, and it's easy for us to run down the hall and grab that. I mean, we certainly could come back after the meeting and report out, but it's just a convenience to the commission. Uh, I was just about to clarify, do we have 
I know you were considering a motion to refer, but do we have an official motion to refer or a motion to approve? Motion before is to pass. It's a motion of approval. Who made it? Um, we, have well, we couldn't have discussion without the air. Uh, we we motioned motion. to have discussion, but at this point, I think oh. we have a motion to I approve. I move to approve or renew the with with the re-referral to budget and finance of the fiscal notes that we communicated. Any second? Do we have a second on that? Second. All right. All those in favor of Aye. approving with a re-referral back to budget and finance with the recommendation recommendations for the fiscal analysis. Aye. 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 All right. Okay, I guess add two. Add two, add Is it add two or add yeah. robot? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you. Take it for all you do.